says in scripture, I see a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven like a bride adorned for her spouse to be. I mean, you guessed it. One of the definitions of the word engage is to get engaged, to be ready to be married, to make a commitment to someone you love and become family. And so after 18 months of isolation, aren't you ready to get engaged? And by the way, a huge thank you to my friend Mark for the fabulous outfit. Literally, use any excuse to get into a dress. <laughs> but, a... <laughs> but also to subvert gender, right? And to challenge gender norms, and any excuse to be fabulous is a good excuse. Now, you might think that I'm joking, but I'm also kind of serious, because one of the definitions of engage is to be betrothed and to get married. Um, but also, um, if you want to get engaged, you have to engage someone's attention. You have to attract them and be engaging. So being engaged can mean to give attention or to receive attention. You already heard me do the Jean-Luc Picard thing about getting engaged. But when you start an engine, one of the old ways of turning the key was to engage the engine. In fencing and sword play, you engage an opponent. Um, engage can mean you are occupied or busy. Sorry, I'm engaged. Um, it can mean to arrange to employ someone. You engage them. You engage volunteers. But especially for us at MCC Toronto, to be engaged means to participate or get involved in. In French, engager means to be morally committed to a particular aim or cause. And I don't know about you, but after 18 months of tough times and physical distancing and even social isolation and of feeling disconnected, I think what we all need right now is some connection, right? Maybe you've been feeling disconnected. I know I have. Maybe you've even felt disconnected to MCC Toronto. Maybe online worship just isn't for you. And even if it is, it isn't the same, right? Because watching it on a screen is passive rather than active. Maybe you are new here, and the last 18 months have been a really difficult time for you in human history, and you are making the connection to join a community, um, something that maybe has been missing in your life that you've realized over the last 18 months. And maybe... Maybe some people aren't here because we've lost some people too. Some of them to COVID-19, some people in our family of faith have died over the last 18 months, and some people have left because the last 18 months have just been too difficult for them, and MCC Toronto failed to meet their needs of community and connection. Even with our neighborhood networks and, and our online programming, some people just won't come back. And I mourn that. COVID-19 has been a tough time. And way back in April 2020, a year and a half ago, uh, I was on a Zoom call with Mayor John Tory and faith leaders from across the city, people of all different religious traditions, and the bishop of the Anglican Church, um, Bishop Andrew, said that during the SARS crisis, remember when we thought SARS was a pandemic? <laughs> Remember that pandemic? Well, during that time, some people didn't feel comfortable in church and they didn't feel comfortable in crowds. And the Anglican Church of Canada in Toronto lost 20% of its members that year and they never came back. 20%. And we have no idea what the long-term impact of COVID-19 will be uh, in terms of our health system and, and in terms of science, but in our society as well, on faith communities like ours. I cannot even conceive of the number of PhD theses that are going to be written on COVID-19, both from the science perspective, but also the social studies perspective. And, and we don't have any idea what it'll do to our community of MCC Toronto. We've lost the engagement of many, and I mourn that loss. But we've also engaged some new people I, I know dozens of you are here for the first time, and I have this vision, I don't know, that maybe this dream where we will emerge from this difficult time in human history as a stronger global people, 
but also as a stronger community of faith, for there are new people in our midst. Despite all the challenges of COVID-19 and the very real loss of life of thousands, of, of hundreds of thousands of people around the world, it has also been a beautiful experience of us reprioritizing our lives and even going deeper spiritually and reevaluating what really matters. Because last Sunday we had our first in-person event. It was an open house for new people. And there were 25 new folks visiting with us for the first time. And I've met a few of you today who are here for the first time. And I want you to know that you are welcome here. And I don't know about you, but do you feel the energy in this room this morning? So when our first scripture reading, our psalm says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We mean it. It is good to be here. And it's great to have folks watching online. And boy, am I glad to be here. But our second reading today was from the book of Revelation. And there are many people, even whole religious traditions within the Christian canon, that see the book of Revelation as this fantastical story about the end of the world, the end of time. It's called eschatology, the study of the end of times. Um, And it's oddly appropriate as we are in the midst of a global pandemic. But my theology and, and the theology of most progressive scholars is that the book of Revelation isn't about the future but rather that it's about the past and that the author of that book, whose name is John, not the same John as the Gospel of John or the Epistle of John, but that John wrote this fantastical vision about what was happening in his time in the year 70 AD because to him, it felt like the end of the world. You see, in 70 AD, the people of Israel, uh, actually a couple years earlier, in 68 AD, had defeated the Roman oppressors that had been occupying their territory for hundreds of years. They kicked out and beat the Roman army, uh, and it was an amazing victory. And for two years, they were free again in the city of Jerusalem. That was until Julius, or sorry, Caesar Vespasian, then the Roman emperor, sent squadrons of soldiers to decimate the city of Jerusalem. They bombarded it with catapults for months. They blocked off the supply lines of food and water. Uh, And once the city was starved after months, they burst through the city gates and they killed every man, woman, and child they could get their hands on. And they laid waste to the city of Jerusalem, including the temple, the center of the religious life of Jewish people. The very throne of God, the place where they believe God lived, was destroyed. It must have felt like the end of the world as they knew it. For those people, just one short generation after the time of Jesus, it was hell on earth with horsemen of the apocalypse and plagues. It was awful. And that's what John wrote about, was the awful era he lived in. But the book of Revelation doesn't end with the end of times. Because in the second last chapter, in in chapter 21 that we heard today, after all of the bad stuff in the world, John dreamed of a new Jerusalem, of a new beginning, of new life that was so beautiful, it was like a bride adorned for her husband to be. Almost as beautiful as I looked in that dress, right? John dreamed of a new thing being born that was so lovely and powerful that it was like two young lovers ready to be married. That it was like the object of our desire had engaged us. And who we are to be engaged with in the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation is God's very self. So John wrote this, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them, and they will be God's peoples, and God's self will be with them, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more, and mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Isn't that the perfect scripture reading for us after 18 months of hell on earth? Behold, I am making all things new. Doesn't that feel like right now? That after the plagues and the horsemen of the apocalypse, the old things, the old ways of being have passed away and they are dead and gone. And that past will never come back. We will never return to the way things used to be. 
And thank God for that. I don't want to go back. I want us to move forward. And the old MCC Toronto that you once knew is dead and gone. Because we are a new MCC Toronto. We have new members in our midst. We are a new community and a new configuration. Because now, now is the perfect time for new beginnings. For, for a new way of being brewing in our midst. To start something new. For us as a community... Right? We have a new women's group that's met a couple times on Zoom. Uh, June is planning a uh, women's group in person sometime in the next month. This Tuesday, our young adults group is getting together at the Second Cup in the Village near Church in Wellesley. If you're 18 to 40-ish, join us for coffee. Reverend June and I will be having pumpkin spice lattes. It's what we do because we're basic. We even have planning underway for a new seniors group. Um, in October, we're going to be doing a spirituality group, studying a book called The Power of Meaning, uh, talking about the meaning of life and how to get the most out of it. In November, we want to start a trauma group, a trauma support group, so we can deal with the trauma of our past and move forward together. We have a brand new kitchen. Check it out on your way out. We could start new community meals and a collective kitchen. Um, just before the COVID-19 pandemic, our board started an engagement community uh, committee. Um, it, was, it was headed up by Lisa Chinnery and Bentley Springer, and now our two newest board members, Lee Moran and Sylvie Peltier, um, have joined our engagement committee as we seek to be more engaged and engage you and your wants and your needs and desires and help you meet new friends, find a new community, go deeper spiritually. So yes, behold the new groups and committee and community of MCC Toronto, because behold, God is saying, with you, we make all things new. But now is also the perfect time for you to do something new. Maybe you're one of those new members of our congregation attending for the first time. Maybe you're a lurker who's been coming here for worship or watching online for a, online for a while, and you want to get more engaged. Uh, you want to get involved in some of our, our programs. Did you know that if you get together with five friends, or four others, and yourself, and if you raise $18,000, you can sponsor a refugee to come to Canada, either somebody you know or, or somebody designated by the United Nations High Commission on Refugees who is in a life-altering, um, life dangerous um, experience, with just $18,000, you and some friends in a time commitment can save a life. Oh, and by the way, the Canadian government will, will uh, throw in the first 25,000, uh, 25% of that 18,000 thanks to a new program that MCC Toronto advocated for called the Rainbow Wrap Program. They actually announced that it was becoming a permanent program here in our building. Maybe you're a longtime congregant and you're ready to go deeper and to do more. We have volunteer opportunities galore from our, our triangle program, the LGBTQ High School. We need volunteers to help make lunch for high school kids every day. We have a group that meets here on Wednesdays called Club Sandwich that makes 1,500 sandwiches for street-involved folks every single week. We've got our refugee program. We have ministries galore. And you're going to be hearing the word engage and engage, get engaged a lot in the next little while as we seek to engage you better and get you more involved and have you find community and friends and go deeper in your sense of spirituality. Behold, God says, I am making all things new. And did you know, today is Reverend June's first time in front of a, a, a congregation as her authentic self, fully out. Isn't that worth a round of applause? Welcome to our team and to our family, June, and welcome home. Because as June always says, COVID has been tough, y'all. But it's also been a time of beholding. And the possibilities are endless. Because together we are beholding a new thing. When we partner with each other and when we partner with God, we make magic happen. Because after the apocalypse, after the plagues, the new Jerusalem shall come down like a bride adorned for her beloved, and God will be with us, and God will wipe every tears from our eyes, and God will co-create a new thing with us. You know, before the COVID-19 pandemic, I have to admit, I was sometimes a bit of a workaholic. Since moving here to Toronto a few years ago, I probably didn't foster friendships in the best way I could, and so when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, it hurt, and it was lonely. 
But COVID-19 taught me some work-life balance. Last summer, when our sermons were pre-recorded, this, this uh, friend of mine who had been trying to get together with me for months, but I never had time, said, hey, Jeff, you want to go camping? And we became the best of friends. This has been an awful time, an apocalypse. It's felt like hell on earth, but out of it, a new thing that is beautiful is emerging. So here's my question. What did COVID-19 teach you? What ways of being are you committed to never returning to? What are you ready to let go of and declare dead and gone? And what new way of being are you committed to creating in your life, in your community, in this place of MCC Toronto? How do you want to re-engage with your life, with your community, and with this community? Because God is reaching out to you and wants to co-create and partner with you. We are in this thing called life together. And as Jesus always says, we are called to love the Lord our God with all our strength and all our soul and all our might, and to love our neighbors, and to love ourselves. Because together through love, through the power of God's partnership, we will build a new and better MCC Toronto in a new and better world together. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen.